Good morning, everyone. I'm Michael. I'm going to be your host for around about the next half hour. So just a quite a short session, this one. Uh, we're looking at adding a festive message to your invoices and statements this morning. So we're using the report designer to add that little bit of text. Now, obviously, the, the process we're looking at today is adding a festive message, but you could use that for a number of reasons. So we're adding things like your bank details, payment terms, other information to your invoices or statements. Yeah, for your invoices, it might be new product ranges. So adding a little bit of text to a little bit of self-promotion, a little bit of marketing on your on your invoices. So that type of thing. So once you've learned how to do that, it opens up a, a whole host of opportunities for you. Right, so as I say, the session should last around about half an hour. A little bit of housekeeping just before we get started though. So we don't need a microphone for these sessions. If you've got one, just as normal, it will be muted. So that means if you've got any questions for us, you just need to pop them into the questions panel. Questions panel, if you click on your little icon on your toolbar on the right, it's the one that looks like the speech bubble containing the question mark, give it a click and it will expand the panel. You get the box in the bottom right hand corner so that you can use that to submit any comments or questions that you have. So keep them coming. Just myself running the session with you all this morning. So. Uh, do bear with me here and there. If there are any questions, I'll try my best to pick them up. I will hang around for questions at the end as well. Let me just find the agenda slide. So not a massive agenda for this one. Quite a straightforward topic that we're going to be covering. I haven't bothered with a handout for this session either because it is fairly straightforward. There's not a lot that I could provide you with on a handout. If you do want detailed information, uh, then you will find things like the steps and other uses for adding text onto your layout, you'll find that type of information available already within our help center. So a little bit of background first of all, uh, gonna start with a little bit of an introduction. Uh, we'll then run, just run through a number of demonstrations. So we'll try and cover invoices and statements, but however, once you've learned one, it doesn't really matter whether it's a report or a layout within your software, whether that's an invoice, a statement, remittance, sales order, purchase order, quote, uh, credit note, all of those. It, it's the same sort of process that you'll go through to edit that layout to apply that text. And obviously, whatever text you want to you enter is entirely up to yourself. So obviously, if you are going to be adding like some sort of festive message, you'll want to know, you'll be, be able to repeat that to remove that information uh, once you've got past whenever you deem is necessary to remove it. Right, so we'll run through a number of demonstrations. Uh, just at the end, I'll explain more about the additional support that's available. Uh, and then if there are any questions, I'll, I'll try and pick up those as well. Right, so we'll get started. So uh, text-wise, so for adding a, a message, we'll concentrate on invoices for the time being, and then we'll switch across to, to statements. So there are a number of options when it comes to adding text, and maybe just supplying that little bit of extra text when it comes to invoicing. Now, one that you might not be aware of, and I'll quickly mention this one, because it just gives you that bit more, bit more flexibility, uh, it means that you can personalize that message a little bit more, is when you're entering an invoice. So I just bring up a product invoice. Doesn't really matter who it's for. So if I add some products to that invoice, again, doesn't matter what they are. So one of the options you do got is, or you've got available to you, is when you're in the product code, if you type in the letter M, so M only, and then you press your tab key, it brings up an item line message. Now an item line message is used where you just wanna add a bit of text to your invoices. Now you are gonna be restricted as to how much you can enter there. I think that's off the top of my head, I think it's 60 characters. So you've got three lines of 60 characters. So you could add a bit of text in that way. So if I just put, uh, let's just play happy Christmas as an example. I'll just type Xmas as well, so it's a little bit quicker for me to type. So if I just include that, so it's got that message on there, so in the description. Now, that, again, that could be anything. Some people use it as a way of breaking up their invoices. So if you deliver goods on, you know, you deliver certain items on a Monday or you receive, uh, you, you're building up the invoice over a period of time, you might put a Monday order and then list the items, Tuesday order, list the items, or you might use it for, it could be anything, it's just text at the end of the day. 
So that's one way of doing it. So if I just save that one. Uh, what I'll quickly do is just highlight that invoice. And if I just go to print it, uh, and we'll just choose one of the standard layouts. So one that I haven't amended so far. Let's pick on, uh, which one should we choose? Let's just pick on this one. And if I preview it, and you'll see you've got that text appearing at the bottom here. So it will automatically pull that through into the main body of your invoice. Now, although you potentially you could amend things like fonts and stuff like that, it means it's going to impact on the rest of the main body as well. But it means because you're using an M as well, you've got to key that in each and every time. But you do have that flexibility so you can pick and choose what the message is and whether to include it or not. If it's a consistent message that you, you want to, to sort of include. So let's say on this particular invoice, if I scroll down to the bottom, and let's say I didn't use like something like the delivery address as an example, I might want to just put a message in there. Again, you can see I've got payment due date in there. Traditionally, it's where you would have the delivery date, but it could be used for anything. You might just put a little bit of text along the bottom, but you can pick and choose where you want that text to appear. And it's very easy to add text to your layouts. Now to do that, all we need to do is find the layout that you, you're gonna be using. So again, we'll, we'll just stick with this one. Actually, I'll flag it as a favorite, just so it's a little bit easier to find. And I'll, as you see, it's in the favorites list here. I'll get rid of that one so it's less confusing. Now let's say we want to add a bit of text to this one. So I'll select the, the layout. We're going to go into edit at the top. Uh, Margaret, you mentioned uh, that is there an option to do that on service invoices? Uh, not with an M, no, but you could add, essentially you could add an additional line in if you wanted to, or just add to the, the information against one of your items. So just add that little bit of extra text because you can sort of wrap the text round and you do shift and return when you're, you're entering your, your, your description. Essentially, it'll just wrap it down onto a next line. So if you did maybe a, a, almost like a, a space and then continued with your description, then you've got that flexibility at that point. But again, it means keying that information in each and every time. Incidentally, with service invoices as well, if you are on the professional level, you can set product records up as service items. You're still gonna be restricted to a certain amount on the amount of text that you can enter in that record but you can set up as a service, but then use a, a product invoice to include those service records as it were. Might be an option for you. Right, anyway, coming back to editing our layout, we're in the report designer. Now, if you're not familiar with the report designer, there's some great recordings available. Uh, so if you want to understand how to maybe add a logo, add a bit of text, draw a box, uh, alignment, changing things like styles of fonts, that type of thing, moving things around, adding a data field, so pulling information in from a customer record or your own record or things things along those lines. There's plenty of recordings available. Links will be included on your follow-up email. Now, let's say for instance, in this on this particular layout, that I wanna add a message to the bottom and I'm gonna use the delivery address area. Now, again, I could just put that message along the bottom if I wanted to, but if you didn't use the delivery address area, and obviously it's got quite a bit of information in there at the moment, what I can do is just, I could highlight something, click delete, and it will remove it. I could draw a box around that. So again, I might think, well, actually these ones, I'll just, just get rid of them. So essentially making some space. So I'll just pop a, pop a message in this box here, Quite common that people would include things like the, the banking details in there, so their customers, when they, they are invoiced, they've got that information and they can pay them online. Rather than the customer come back to you and say, I haven't got your bank details, how do I pay you online? So you're just providing that information by default. Now let's say I want to put a bit of text in, in here. Now what I'm going to do first of all is I've got a little document, so this, this will actually save me uh, typing. So if you attended my uh, session 
last week on letters. So you'll be familiar with this message. So I'm just going to copy that one it's rather than me type it in. I'm not very quick at typing. Uh, we'll go back to our, our layout. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, from the toolbar at the top, there's an option called add text. Now, if you don't have that bit of toolbar displayed, what you can do is just go into the toolbox menu and there's an option on that menu called add text. It does the same thing. But I'm just going to select it from that toolbar there. So add text. All I do is I move the mouse to approximately where I want to start typing. You'll see it turns to a cross. And I'll just click. So let's just click there. Now I'll just drag that across as well. And I, can, I should be able to start typing at that point. So if I start typing, you'll see it resizes the box and I can just about type anything I want. So just put some random information in there. So I'll just delete what's there. But if I paste that message in that I've just, just copied, and potentially that could be it done. Now, if I want to, let's say I want to wrap it, wrap it down a little bit, I can do that. So I can start playing with the, the format of that text. I can also resize the box as well if I wanted to make it, you know, if I wanted to make it smaller. Just click off it and I'll, I'll just drag it back across. So I'll just resize that box. So we've got various options for that. And again, I can I can play with the formatting as well. So I can change that text to whatever I want it to be. And obviously I can amend the formatting as well. So if it were, if I was happy with that, that's fine. I could just save it. So let's just quickly do that. Now, because I've amended a default layout, what I will need to do is go to file and then save as initially. Now it should save it to the correct uh, destination. I don't need to browse and choose somewhere else where I want to save it. Just make, just accept the default folder. So I'll put uh, Michael and I'll put Christmas or Xmas on the end as well, just so I can easily find that. Uh, we'll just save it. So I'm working on the copy now. Now I might be happy with that one. If I want to change things like fonts and styles and colors, sizes I can do all of that as well now let's say I want it to be the same as this one so I want it to be in the same font as this one same size so it looks a bit more consistent on my on my layout so let's say I want to do that so I highlight that one and because I've highlighted that one I can see at the, at the top it uses the style of header 2 so in this case it's using to Homer size 10 in bold now this one here you can see it's using Times New Roman 10, but it's not in bold. Now, if I wanted to do that, it's just a case of make sure I've got the, let me just get rid of that box in the background. So if I've got this one selected, if I was to change it, so I can either browse for it, or because I've already made, I know what that's, style is so in this case when i highlight this one it's saying it's header two if i just highlight my text and then reselect header two from the list it should now put this text in the same style as the other information that's there now that may, might mean at this stage that actually uh, i need to rejig the the text a little bit so it may be a little bit too big because it's changed the size so I can just easily do that, clicking into the box, making the changes just as I go. So I'll we'll just quickly do that one. So we'll leave it at that. And again, I can reposition that if needed. So I just click onto the box, move your mouse over the box, and you'll see when it when it's ready to move it, you, you cross it'll change to a cross, and then you can just drag that with your your cursor keys. Uh, sorry, with your with your mouse at that point. If you find it's a little bit too sensitive for you, 
then with it selected, that text box, I can just use the cursor keys to, to move it in, nudge it sort of into position. You might find because of that text as well, a bit like my mine there, the payment due and the terms at the bottom, you might find it's a bit looks a bit cluttered at that point. So what I'll do with these two, I'll just select them. And again, I could just drag that out of the way uh, or again, select them and use the cursor keys just to, to move them into the right position. When I'm happy, I just click off. Now there's loads that you can do with the text. If I just click on it again, obviously you can put it in bold, italics. So it just depends what you want. Obviously you can change font colors as well if, if, if you wanted to. So if you wanted to be more sort of a, a Christmassy color, you can do green and red, pop some logos on there as well. It's really up to you what text you want to want to uh, end, uh, enter there. Uh, Jesse, you mentioning why did the text cut off even though the box appeared uh, big enough? Uh, just, just the style of the text I had. So it would just be a case of using your options on your toolbar to format it. Again, things like that. Some some people, you, you'll use the options at the, the top for wrapping the text. Others, you might just take the easy option. I was just showing you the easy option of using the return key just to wrap it down. So it's up to you what, which way you want to do that. You will find it automatically wraps as well uh, if you type it in from scratch. But because I pasted it in, it went as two, two big lines there. So loads of options for you have a bit of think about what other uses you've got for that as well so as i mentioned so your payment terms bank details advertising new product ranges new services that you offer so have a look at your invoices that you receive as well for that matter see what's on there what do you like about you know, do they do they include it? And I often see it these days where people will have their logo at the top and it'll have a list of the services or products that they sort of for the, the, the business sector that they work in. So a little bit of advertising and it will just then appear as normal uh, or by default, I should say, well, not as normal. It'll appear by default when you go to either print out the invoice or email it. But it's a nice, simple way of you do that once and it includes it on each invoice you now generate using that specific layout so if i just leave it at that i'll, I'll leave it in green as well for the time being save the changes close out let's go back to my sage uh, i'll just leave that one selected go back to uh I'll go via print for the time being now this is the one that's flagged as the favorite now remember i did edit that one and i did a save as so I now need to find the amended one. So it should be on the list. Just scroll down, see if I can find it. So there it is there. I can see the file name just above where I've got selected there. So I'll, I'll flag that one as a favorite now. And what we'll quickly do is I'll just preview that one. Just maximize that one. If I go down to the bottom of the, the invoice, you'll see the, the text pulling through there. So again, formatting, you can be a bit as creative as you want to be nice and easy obviously when we get beyond that point as well so you think right well i'm going to let that run up to and including sort of uh, let's say the first of january any invoices after that i'm going to remove it so just a case of going back in to amend that layout remove the text or change it to whatever you want it to be and then resave your layout and you, again it would it would take up that new format from that point onwards now amending a statement is pretty much the same now statements obviously it's based on transactions on the that are on the activity so that rules out the m option because that's just an item line message when you update an invoice that has an m on it doesn't include that on the activity so it means that you've got to go down that text route so to do a statement all we would do is we'd go into customers i'll just highlight one for the time being pop into statements Select your layout. So again, I'll just use one of the standard ones. Uh, we'll use that one. We'll edit it. And again, it takes us into the report designer. So the same sort of procedure 
as I say, once, once you've learned that process of adding a bit of text, it is the same, the same steps each time. Just find the space where you want to include that information. So let, let's put it at the bottom again. So let's say I want to pop it in uh, this, this section here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just click add text. Just once I've clicked add text, move the mouse pointer down to where you want to start typing. Just give it a click. And I'll just start typing. So I'll just leave it at that. Again, you can enter whatever text you want. Again, I could have pasted that, that message in again. Save me typing it. But again, you're doing it once. And you've got the same sort of formatting options available. It's standard options that you've got at the top here, whether you want to add text, and you can add multiple amounts of text as well. It's not just that one at the bottom. Uh, similar for uh, adding a logo. Uh, if you want to add clip art or anything like that, just to, just almost like spruce up your layouts, you can, you can do that as well. So add image slash logo, and again, just click and follow that wizard through to insert that. So a really simple process. Does anyone have any questions for me? If you do, if you want to quickly start popping them into the uh, the questions panel, I'm just going to pop back to the slides for a moment. So I'll give you a chance to start popping in any questions that you might have. Uh, now, it does mention there on the, the, the my slide that you, if you want to download a copy of today's slides to click the option. We haven't included a handout for today's session. There's loads of information available in our help centre. And on the subject of making changes, we've got loads of recordings available in relation to the report designer. So how you go about adding a logo, adding email addresses to your layouts, adding payment terms to your invoices. So again, that will probably be as text adding your bank details, looking at the additional reports library, festive messaging using the letters option, something that we did cover last week, uh, and then probably more advanced sections of the report designer, groups and sections, personalizing your invoice layout, and again, understanding customer statements. Loads of, loads of recordings, live sessions over the, the next two weeks. We've got bank feeds, ever popular that one, VAT return we're running tomorrow afternoon, I think. User management will be on Thursday. We're looking at basics also, backing up, archiving a copy of your company data, cash flow option, and also we've got an option, uh, we've got a session booked in for the year end as well. So if you're maybe approaching year end, maybe not quite there yet, but you're approaching it and you want a bit of a reminder as to uh, what's involved in running a year end, then please get yourself signed up for that. Now, links to sign up for the upcoming sessions or to uh, view the recordings, they are included on the follow-up email, which you will receive in uh, in your follow-up email, which you will receive around, around about an hour's time. Uh, Margaret, your question. Uh, You mentioned about the uh, the, the drawback of, of using uh, product invoices that it will not post cost to the specific project in the project module. Uh, you, you're quite right in that respect, and there there is a the, the reason behind that is that costs with with regard to projects and invoices so if you do a product invoice when you assign the uh, the stock itself to the uh, to the project the cost will be associated at that point now you when it comes to invoicing you are encouraged to use a service invoice because you're charging for the the project as a whole or part of that project you're not charging for the individual uh, items themselves or you know if you were selling so many almost like a parts and labor type uh, project it doesn't work in that respect you're you're charging for the actual the the project itself so which is why you're encouraged to use a service invoice the only time you can use a product invoice for a project and get it to update 
that would be if you use an S3 chord, it would give you the option to uh, assign the S3 to uh, an actual project itself to show you that income against the project. I hope that makes sense. Any questions in relation to the report designer at all? Just remember there's loads of information available via our help centre should you need it and obviously our support team is on hand as well. Right, last call for any questions. If you do think of any afterwards, do check out that help centre. Uh, take a copy of your layout when you first go in to edit it. So when you first select your layout, whether it's an invoice or a statement for that matter, just go file save as give it a different file name. It means you could play around with that as well and experiment a little bit if you want to learn more about the report designer. Right, final question again, just Margaret, yours is separate. I'll just pick yours up separate, Margaret. I'll drop you an email for that one rather than uh, deal with it on this particular session. Okay, so we'll end the webinar at that point. Thanks for coming along. Hope you've enjoyed it. Give you a little bit of insight into the flexibility of adding a little bit of text onto your into your invoices or your statements. So again, it's once you've learned how to do it, you'll feel a lot more confident. You probably start using it for all sorts of uh, reasons. So we'll end the webinar at that point. Uh, should be a little survey pop up as you leave the session today. If you can take a minute to complete that, be greatly appreciated. Uh, otherwise, take care, stay safe, and hopefully I'll see you on some other webinars soon. Many thanks.